Dale was running for his life across the platform, his legs shuddering so much that it caused him to stagger, nearly falling over the second his quaking foot made contact with the grubby floor. Each time he almost went down, a jolt of adrenaline, no, of fear, struck him. It kept him upright, helped him correct himself for a split second enough for him to keep running, away from that monster that had come scuttling out of the tunnel. Up until that horrifying moment, and it all seemed like just any other ordinary working day. He'd arrived on time to his job, only to be forced to spend many tedious hours behind his desk. Dale watched the clock hanging on the wall overlooking his office as nine o'clock ever so slowly crawled closer and closer to five. But the day still wasn't quite over. Even once the work was done, there came the dreaded commute back home. That was how he'd found himself, like so many others, tiredly waiting on the platform for the subway train. But what arrived was far from what anyone expected. Everyone else on the platform was running too, barging past each other with all their strength, racing to be among the first to reach the exit and get to safety. Not one of them, including Dale, dared to look back over their shoulders. The screams and disturbing sounds that drowned out each one were more than enough motivation to only look forward, focus on running, on making it out alive. But even with the best will to survive in the world, no amount of fear-heightened awareness could have prevented what came next. Someone in front of Dale toppled over, shoved out of the way by another fleeing passenger. Before he could move out of the way or even quickly help them up, Dale's feet were caught in the fallen person's legs, causing him to tumble to the ground. He and the other passenger, another man in a sharp business suit, were trying to scramble to their feet, untangling their legs now that they'd tripped up, and the other man screamed, unable to stand back up before the monster got him. Dale made the critical mistake. He turned to see what was happening. Despite all his fear, that twinge of morbid curiosity was too great, and the moment he looked, he instantly regretted it. He was met with the sight of a creature, a huge, hideous thing. It looked like a train, but not a subway car, like an old-style steam locomotive with an elongated body behind it. It was a stomach-churning, fleshy shade of pink, its body littered with eyes. Beneath it were rows upon rows of insect-like legs, making it look almost akin to a gigantic centipede with a train at the front of it. But what held Dale's horrified gaze was the face. Embedded on the red, rusted steam train was a nightmarish face, grinning wildly and bearing a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. That face was the thing that Dale saw in his dying moments, darting toward him in an instant as it claimed another victim. Something was wrong here, very wrong. This monster was none other than Choo Choo Charles, the fabled terror of Araniram, the half-train, half-spider that many had thought to be vanquished. But while Charles was still alive, it wasn't in the same form everyone remembered. Somehow, Choo Choo Charles had been transformed. No, merged. He was a hybrid, a cross between his former spider-like self and another deadly monstrosity, the Train Eater. This nightmare had all begun back on Araniram, the tiny island far off the coast of the mainland. Once the hub of operations of the Charles Mining Company, the small landmass had quickly become the domain of Choo Choo Charles himself. After digging into a secluded tunnel beneath the island, workers for the Charles Mining Company had stumbled upon an entire network of caverns below, and following these underground tunnels they encountered the likes of which nobody had ever seen before. Buried underneath Araniram, kept hidden for centuries, were thousands of glowing monster eggs. And that wasn't all. The ruins of ancient temples were also unearthed, with carved stone tablets that depicted humans, the natives of Araniram, battling gigantic spider-like creatures. It didn't take a genius to figure out that these same creatures were what was housed within the eggs. This would normally be enough of a warning to leave well enough alone. Any sane person would either leave the eggs behind beneath the ground where they were or destroy them so they never pose any kind of danger again. But sadly, that wasn't what happened. Instead, the wealthy and greedy owner of the mine, one Warren Charles III, took a keen interest in the eggs, which soon developed into an obsession that even some of his workers became susceptible to. Then, when a fateful accident led to one of the spider creatures being hatched, the multi-legged monstrosity managed to lodge itself in one of the steam trains that the mine workers used to transport raw materials around the island. The train acted as a protective armored shell around the monster's body, and thus, Choo Choo Charles was born, named after the man responsible for unleashing him. Warren Charles III himself soon began to worship the living locomotive. Those of his workers who were still loyal and shared Mr. Charles's fanaticism quickly formed a cult that worshipped Choo Choo Charles as he began his reign of terror over the unsuspecting residents of Araniram. 
Eventually, it took the combined efforts of the innocent people living on Erinirum and a brave newcomer following a plan left behind by Eugene, a man who had formerly been a supervisor for the Charles Mining Company. Together, they were able to topple Choo Choo Charles once and for all and stop his destruction of the island for good, or so they thought. But you see, Eugene wasn't the only of Warren Charles III's former employees to turn against Choo Choo Charles. While Choo Choo Charles was still alive and terrorizing the entire island of Araniram, there was a spate of infighting among his cult-like followers. Some had suggested to their leader, Warren Charles III, that they should be making efforts to transport Choo Choo Charles to the mainland. There, he'd be able to do even more damage. Araniram was tiny after all, and they felt unleashing the eight-legged locomotive in a more densely populated area would allow the carnivorous creature to become even more powerful. Warren Charles III disagreed. In fact, he vilified the subsect of his cult for their idea of bringing Charles to the mainland. The mining company owner had become obsessed with the ancient temples hidden around Araniram, convinced that they could be used to grant Charles more power. Warren Charles and those in the cult still loyal to him believed that the monster eggs could be brought to the altar, and this would unlock Choo Choo Charles' ultimate form, Hell Charles. Disavowed and excommunicated from the cult of Charles worshippers, these outcasts were told there was no longer a place for them on the island of Araniram. Warren Charles III told them to leave, and they were free to stay, but there was no guarantee that Choo Choo Charles would spare their lives if they did, and so the outcasts from the cult boarded a small boat and sailed back to the mainland. Once they were there, they tried to tell others of Choo Choo Charles, not to warn them, but to convince them to worship the half-train, half-demonic spider. They still believed that Charles would one day make his way to the mainland, which was home to a huge city, a bustling metropolis, and where there was a city there was bound to be people. More people meant more food for the monstrous deity. But naturally, nobody believed the cult's outcasts. Stories of a spider-legged steam train coming from a tiny island to devour them all, it just didn't seem plausible. So, to many, it sounded too crazy to believe. And any that did subscribe to the outcast's devotion to Choo Choo Charles weren't exactly stable themselves. But there was one who joined their ranks, who was something of an anomaly. His name was Elias, and he was among the quickest to believe in a demonic train monster. When asked why he didn't need much convincing, he explained to the outcasts that he'd seen a creature like it before. It had been just a few years before, and Elias had been just an ordinary person working in the city. Like everyone else, he'd work a 9-to-5 to pay the bills, then hop on the subway home at the back half of every day. But one night, he'd been held back at work until late. By the time he made it to the subway station, there was only one other waiting on the platform. Well, one other person, at least. The sound of something approaching through the subway tunnel had caught Elias' attention, seeing the shrouded shape of what he expected to be a subway train emerging from the shadows. But what came gliding along the tracks wasn't a train at all, it was the train eater. It had a huge gaping maw, with a tiny humanoid figure hanging from the fleshy walls of its mouth, like a uvula at the back of a human throat. Eyeballs were dotted all over its long body, too many to even count, all scouring the platform for food. It moved the same speed as a subway car through the tunnel, spotting its next victim. Terrified for a moment, Elias had been surprised to see that the train eater didn't attempt to eat him. It went for the other person standing on the platform just waiting to catch the subway home like Elias had been. Seeing the train eater slither off into the subway tunnel from where it came, he was filled with relief, and a newfound perspective as well. From Elias's point of view, the terrifying creature he'd encountered was proof that there were forces in the world, monsters and beings far greater than humanity. It was impossible to deny he'd seen the train eater with his own eyes. And what's more, it had spared him. The beast speeding through the subway tunnels could have killed him on the spot, but it hadn't. So, when he was presented with a cult who told him of yet another carnivorous monster resembling some form of train, Elias believed them on the spot. The outcasts welcomed him into their ranks, and it didn't take long for him to start spreading his story, recounting to them the day he'd seen the train eater and lived to tell about it. The cast-out cultists were fascinated and decided to start scouring subway stations late at night in order to track down this other monster. It took weeks of coordinated effort, staking out stations sometimes for entire nights at a time, only for there to be no sign of the train eater. But the outcasts believe Elias' story wholeheartedly, and they weren't just searching for another train monster to worship either. Despite the distance, with him still trapped on Araniram, their devotion to Choo Choo Charles never faltered. That is, until the day they received the fateful news. It was during their search for the train eater that one of the cultists learned of what had happened. They narrowed down its location to one of the city's subway stations, with Elias leading the efforts to find the creature. 
and that was when one of the other cultists came rushing to tell the others. Holding a discarded newspaper in hand, the headline read, Terror on Araniram, Giant Monster Found Dead on Island. The photo plastered over the front page was of Choo Choo Charles, defeated by the islanders. Just then, as they had read the article about how their eight-legged deity had been derailed, something came speeding through the subway tunnel. The train eater snarled, gnashing its teeth as its eyes stared at the cultists who were just out of reach on the platform. In awe, they looked at the creature. Yet another train monster had appeared, just as Elias had told them, and with it the train eater brought a chance for Choo Choo Charles to live again. With Warren Charles III gone and everyone on Erinurum working to remove the remains of the carnivorous locomotive from the island, the remaining outcast cultists knew they had to act fast. Elias studied the story in the newspaper, reading that the body of Choo Choo Charles would be transported back to the mainland via a huge cargo ship. He and the other outcasts had already begun to work together to coordinate finding the train eater and now they were coming up with a plan to not only revive Choo Choo Charles, but combine both of them into the ultimate creature. With the help of their small network of members, the cultists were able to keep tabs on the train eater as well as figure out how they were going to get their hands on what was left of Choo Choo Charles. After all, once he'd been brought to the mainland by boat, he wouldn't just stay in the harbor forever. Elias pointed out that there'd be someone waiting to transport the remains, be it the army, some shady government organization, or even just the city's municipal workers coming to take away the terrorizing train to use him for scrap metal. While Elias and one group of cultists waited at the harbor, and another kept a close eye on the train eater's whereabouts, the third group set about readying the next stage of the plan. The train eater being constantly on the move made it tricky to know exactly where they need to be, so to make sure they were ready, multiple cultists had constructed makeshift conductors, to which they'd attached long lengths of cable, and lucky for them, a thunderstorm was rolling in. Elias and his group watched as the ship docked in the harbor, offloading something huge that had been hurriedly covered in a tarpaulin. The increased winds of the impending storm left no doubt, it was Choo Choo Charles underneath. The cultists made quick work of the guards at the dock, waiting for them to fully load Charles into a truck before they struck. After all, it'd be far easier for them to steal a truck than a huge eight-legged spider and steam train hybrid. As they drove the hijacked vehicle away, they radioed the other two groups asking for the location of the train eater. At the same moment, the multi-eyed monster sped through one of the subway stations. The cultists who witnessed it radioed to Elias, explaining it just raced past them. Thinking fast, they predicted where the creature would be arriving next and stepped on the gas to head to a station further down the line. One of the others grabbed their cable and weather vane. They had to make it there in time. All the cultists mobilized in unison, competing with the bustle of city traffic. They had a tiny window of opportunity, and it was rapidly closing. There were so many factors. The speed of the train eater, trying to time it right with the storm that had already started to pour from overhead. And yet, somehow, the truck carrying Choo Choo Charles' remains arrived at the subway station with just enough time to set everything up. They met with the cultist who lashed their conductor to the steam train wearing Spider's body. Then Elias rushed down into the subway with the length of cable trailing behind. He was panting, sweating, trying to rush past commuters before one of them tripped over the cable or trying to tamper with it. He had to get to the platform, to the train tracks, before the train eater sped through the station and before the lightning hit. Hearing the rumble from the storm clouds just as he reached the platform, Elias threw the cable onto the tracks just as the train eater arrived. The lightning blast struck the conductor, traveling through the cable to electrify what was left of Choo Choo Charles, only to continue zapping through the rest of the cable conducted through the subway tracks right up to the train eater. There was an almighty boom, deafening commuters as a blinding flash of light exploded from within the subway station. By the time the deafening ringing in everyone's ears had faded and the onlooker's eyes had recovered from the sudden bright light, there appeared on the tracks something straight out of a nightmare. It was both Choo Choo Charles and the train eater. The lightning strike had not only revived the dead Charles, but combined him perfectly with the new creature slithering through the subway. Except now, his long body possessed the spindly pointed spider legs that Charles had used to roam around under Araniram. The addition of legs to his longer train eater body made him even faster, a newfound talent he quickly began to demonstrate. He could crawl up onto the platform now, lunging at bystanders who had all begun to flee in sheer terror with poor Dale being one of them. As the train eater, he'd been limited in his movements, stuck on the tracks, so he could only catch people who were just too close to the edge of the platform. But Choo Choo Charles had never needed tracks thanks to his spider legs, and as such, the carnivorous reach of the combined creature was far greater than ever before. 
pushing against the commuters who were trying to escape the subway station, the other cultists rushed down to the platform to join Elias. They'd all looked in amazement at the combined creature that they'd played a hand in creating. To everyone else, it was horrifying, but to the cultists, they found it beautiful. For a few moments, at least. Now with his many eyes dotted along his centipede-like body, Choo Choo Charles, the train eater, could see all angles around him at once, yet another new ability that made him even deadlier than before. Spotting the cultist, he scuttled toward the nearest one and devoured him in an instant. Before even a second could pass, he had attacked another and another, picking them off one by one, yet able to do so horrifyingly quickly. Whenever Charles the train eater was attacking, he was already picking his next target in advance, using his multiple eyes to spot whoever was nearest and who he'd strike at next. Elias and the others watched in horror and confusion as their combined creation callously carved through each of them. In their determination and delusions, they'd forgotten that Choo Choo Charles and the train eater were both carnivores. It didn't matter that the cultists worshipped them or worked tirelessly to combine the pair of monsters into the ultimate form. All Choo Choo Charles the train eater cared about was one thing, dinner. By the time the police arrived at the subway station, there was nothing but carnage left. With no sign of the cultists or the giant train creature that eyewitnesses had reported seeing. After a while of things being quiet, some started to believe the whole thing was some elaborate hoax or a mass hallucination. The city officials refused to shut down the subway. After all, if nobody could get to and from work, everything would grind to a halt. Little did anyone know there was still a monster down there. Scuttling through the tunnels on his many legs, Choo Choo Charles the train eater was cautious, calculating, and cruel. He carefully picked his moments to strike, screeching out of the shadows to feed before speeding off. Sometimes a subway maintenance worker would vanish into thin air. Other times it was someone waiting for the last train home after a long day. And then on rare occasions, entire subway cars would disappear, along with the passengers aboard, never to be found again. The combined creature could afford to pick its targets. After all, it had enough eyes to spot them and the speed of its multiple legs. Plus, now Choo Choo Charles the train eater had access to every tunnel and every station. He could appear anytime he liked. The entire subway system was now his territory, with all the humans he could eat.